And each year, the chief state school officers oversee a process to select the national teacher of the year. And then there's a committee, committee composed of some 15 different organizations, NEA is one of those, to select the national teacher of the year. The national teacher of the year is always honored at the White House. And um, most of those years, we have the pleasure of hosting them at the NEA and having a great conversation. A few weeks ago, I had a chance to talk with the 2014 Teacher of the Year, Sean McComb. Sean McComb. He teaches English at Patapsco, Patapsco High School and Center for the Arts in Baltimore County, Maryland. And as typical, he had some great ideas about education and especially the power of the teacher-student relationship. Sean's wife, Sarah, teaches at the same school, and together they created a mentor-based program. It's called Advancement via Individual Determination, A-V-I-D. There are now 10 teachers in the school who are involved in this program. And what they do is they connect with students in ninth grade, take them all the way through their senior year, and that personal connection they make really helps students stay on track, especially as it relates to going to college. In fact, 98% of the students in the last two AVID graduation classes were admitted to four-year college. 80, 98%. Sean is a staff development teacher at Patapsco High School, and he also trains teaching candidates at Townsend University, where he is an adjunct professor. So he does know about the many challenges facing not only K-12, but also our higher ed. He's also a new father. In fact, he was home with his infant son when he learned that he had been named National Teacher of the Year. I know Sean is going to make an excellent ambassador for our profession over the next year. Please join me in welcoming the 2014 National Teacher of the Year, Sean McComb. Thank you. Thank you, NEA. Good afternoon, thank you so much for, ha for having me here. I am so proud to be here with you. So thankful for your work across this country. As a career long member of my teachers association in Baltimore County, Maryland, your work, your work gives me peace of mind. Your efforts to defend the hard earned rights of teachers that is so important and necessary to be able to do our work is so important. And so I start by saying thank you, NEA, for your work. A couple of weeks ago, I was flying home to Baltimore and I sat with a couple of young children. And naturally, we got to talking about their experience in school. I asked them about their favorite thing from the past year. And the sixth grader told me about how she went to Mount Vernon, how she had learned about George Washington, how he was a great leader and a great man, and she loved going to see his estate. And she told me about how she kept begging and pestering the guard to open up his tomb, but he was being stubborn and he just wouldn't do it for her. <laughs> And a third grader told me about how her class, each person in her class adopted a caterpillar that they kept in the cups on their desks and they cared for these caterpillars and took care of them until they turned into beautiful butterflies and how her teacher told her that they were all in that process themselves. I asked them about their favorite teachers. The sixth grader told me that when she was in fourth grade, Mr. Hyde just invested in her passion and her love for drama and theater. He came to all of her performances and he took out the time to tell her that she had a talent. And the third grader, she told me about her first grade teacher who was so much fun. And when their brains hurt from all of their learning, she gave them dance breaks when they needed it to have a little bit more fun. That's cheer for dance breaks, I like that, that's good. 
And over the course, over the course of this flight, I saw just how important these teachers were in the lives of these two little girls. This sixth grader was scrawling in a notebook characters and plot lines and settings so that she could make her next play. And the third grader, and maybe the most adorable thing I have ever seen, mid-flight decided that it was time to show me what a dance break looked like. And she started dancing in the aisle and breaking it down. But I saw with my own eyes a truth that I know from every day working at my high school in Maryland. I know that teachers can be that decisive element in a student's life when they walk through the doors to our school buildings. That we have the power to push passions, to help healing, to hand out hope, and to empower inspirations in the lives of children. And it's not just true for our younger students. Our secondary teachers combine a passion for teaching content with a talent for teenagers. And I think about the children who have graduated from our school. I think of Karen, whose fondness for science flourished with her AP bio teacher, and that has propelled her on a path to medical school. And I think about Sarah, whose fascination with history has turned into an insatiable curiosity, one that she now shares with her own students in her own classroom. And I think about Travis, whose penchant for problem solving was always encouraged by her math, his math teacher, and now he solves problems for the National Security Agency. So if you're listening, Travis, we appreciate you and we are proud of you. <laughs> And it was true in my life too. Mr. Schertz, my 11th grade English teacher, showed me that great stories can provide a window into humanity and the human condition, that we can experience the lives of others, analyze motives, and think about scenarios through literature. And he did this for me at a time when I wanted more than anything else to live a life other than the one that I was experiencing. But he did something else. He taught me that I had a voice, that I had something to contribute, that I could give back, that I had potential. And there's something more that all of these teachers were up to than se teaching cell replication, European history, or trig identities. They were helping us to believe in ourselves. They were creating an optimism for our future while giving us skills to trust that we could make it come to be. They were giving us hope. I'm proud to be a teacher a hope developer. Ever was a beautiful line from Shawshank Redemption on my heart that hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. Hope, hope is such a good thing, in fact, that Gallup's research on hope on students who are hopeful, who say that they have the agency to make a bright future for themselves and they have an adult who believes that they can do that, they said this sense of hope is a better predictor of college success than SAT and GPA. Hope matters, caring matters, loving matters. And across this country, Children come to school and look to their teachers to hold out hope, to give students a belief in themselves, to give them skills and agency to make their future come true. It is that exact effort that drew me, like so many of you, to the classroom, to be that decisive element in the life of a student. And in order to thrive in that work, we need to establish another arena beyond the classroom in which teachers should be the decisive element, our school cultures. Our most, one of the most pressing questions for any educator in, in America is are, what are you doing to create a supportive and collaborative culture among the teachers in your building? You know, when I get a new group of students, I say to them, I am your teammate now. I am on your team. I am Team Thomas, or I am Team Kiana, and I am going to support you and help you improve in order to be the best that you can be, and we are all going to do that for each other here. Isn't this what we should be hearing from our administrators and colleagues in our skill build school buildings every day? that we're building a culture of support, collaboration, and improvement. We know how learning can blossom, skills can improve, and achievement rise in the rich soil of a supportive, collaborative school culture. And like you, I have worked hard throughout my career in an effort to make my classroom more student-centered. 
to allow students to collaborate, to observe each other's work as models and to learn from each other's perspectives. Let's all make this the norm in our professional learning as well. Let's work to create systems that encourage collaboration, opening classroom doors to colleagues and allotting the time and support to help us grow our practice. Because the expert we need doesn't have to be a consultant across the country, it can be our colleague the next classroom over. And let's have teachers take a decisive role in school leadership. And that does not mean teachers get to do the annoying paperwork for an administrator. Or a teacher gets to handle discipline during their planning period as a leadership experience. Let's talk about teams of teachers analyzing school needs, researching and proposing solutions, and leading through the change process. Let's have collaborative leadership in our schools. With teachers leading a supportive, collab collaborative culture focused on improvement, with time to collaborate and opportunities to be the catalyst for change, our schools can go from good to great. Teachers can better move the hearts and minds of children, and I am sure that the almighty data point will follow. But there is still a larger arena beyond our classrooms and our school cultures where our profession be the decisive element. We are facing massive challenges as a nation. How do we give everyone a fair shot to make it in America? How do we sustain the planet? How do we balance a safety net and self-reliance? How do we clean some of the toxic elements from our culture? These are some big, complex, challenging questions. But I'll tell you where we can find the answer to these questions. They're right in front of our faces in our classrooms every morning. The answer is our students. The answer is in how we will prepare them to be our next leaders, in what conditions their education to meet that challenge will take place, and in who we prepare and develop as the teachers entrusted to do this work. A few weeks ago, I read an article in the New York Times about some of the students we will need to be a part of this answer. Two professors of economics claimed that our nation's identity as the land of opportunity is a myth. Now maybe I'm a romantic, maybe I'm just filled with the hope that comes from working with students, or maybe it's because of my personal experience, but I know there is still land in this country that holds the hope of opportunity. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've spent my career working there. It's even marked out with signs. They're yellow and in big black letters they say school zone. Our schools are the land of opportunity in this country. They must be. Our children depend on them to be and we must demand for them to be. And the article didn't stop there. It went on to claim that for many children at the bottom, opportunity is not just out of reach. It is inconceivable, inconceivable. It sounds like more than ever, children at the bottom need incredible schools and incredible teachers. Like you, I have spent my career changing what students once considered to be inconceivable. Read that entire book, inconceivable. Write that many pages, inconceivable. Enjoy learning, for some students, inconceivable. But then it happens. The book gets read and enjoyed. The paper gets written and revised. Collaboration becomes contagious. Discussion becomes delightful. And learning becomes loved. I'll tell you what I can conceive of. I can, can conceive that here too, here in this massive challenge, in the heart of what we are and how we define ourselves as a country, as a land of opportunity, education, and teachers can be the decisive element once again. Now, it won't come easy, and we can't do it alone. We need this nation to truly invest in its children. We need to build up this profession, not break it down.
We need our culture to value education more than it ever has before. So the biggest question facing our nation today, the one that can lead to the answers to all of those other questions, is do we have the guts to invest in our children? Do we have the will to give them the care, hope, and opportunity, and education necessary so that each can contribute their unique gifts to our society, no matter where they start? Will we invest in schools so that all students can become problem solvers and innovators, excellent communicators and collaborators in order to work together to grapple with these massive challenges? While others deliberate, teachers have chosen to act. While critics, critics detract, we impact lives. While pundits push an agenda, we push learning. We dedicate our lives to nurturing the next visionary leaders, caring neighbors, brilliant innovators, and empowered citizens. We are proud to be a part of the solution. We are proud to take up this work. We are proud to call on the better conscience of our country, and we are proud to bring hope and opportunity. We are proud to be teachers. I thank you, NEA, for your work. I thank you for being teachers. I thank you for bringing hope and opportunity. God bless you, and God bless America's teachers. John McComb, 2014 National Teacher of the Year. Give it up. Yeah.